so here you are you you had a pretty decent childhood right. in, in Oregon correct right. and um, the, you, it comes to a point where your parents split up did they d divorce they didn't and divorce they, they, they just they separated, separated. Yeah. okay yeah. and um, that's when there, the age gap between you and your brothers was super it, it was a lot so it wasn't even like there was a big brother to kind of guide you or anything like right. that correct right. tell me I guess the the precise detail in a sense where that started to decline like what was it that you remember that the enemy used in your life to start to make you decline what type of influence well you know as i mentioned I started, when when that void was there of family all of a sudden it was just me and my dad and he was toasted almost every night so yeah uh, there was this void I started filling it with bad relationships and bad friendships okay um, and you know it started off small and it's just the sin that I that consumed me grew well after a couple of years of them being separated my dad decides we're, well we're gonna move to Reno where your mom is we're gonna try to get back together okay um, but dad my dad was still you know he was he was a mess too and uh, so we moved to Reno, and that's where I started my uh, freshman year was living in Reno. Mm -hmm. um, and I had uh, I had this bitterness uh, and anger over what happened that I just kind of let consume me. With and your parents, the yeah, bitterness towards yeah, your parents. I was like, okay. you, you you would think as a child you'd be like, great, mom and dad are getting back together, everything's mm -hmm. going to be good. But there was a sense of uh, there was a sense of kind of an abandonment feeling that oh, I w wow. and I was angry about it. Yeah. And so I, that never really healed. And so what it did is it started to consume me. And I started in Reno as a 14-year-old. Um, I started with drugs, started, you know, drinking, smoking weed. Um, by the time I was 15, I was into meth uh, very bad. Wow. So all this started around, what, 15? Is that yeah, 14. 14, 15. Do you remember the the person who offered you these things for the first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, I was looking for, I didn't want anything that looked good. Like, in other words, when I went to the new school, I didn't find the people who had it together and try to come alongside and learn how to be a good student. Yeah. I was looking for the ones that were hanging out, you know, under the bleachers, the ones that are skipping school, the, all the troubled kids. Mm -hmm. That's who I wanted to be around. Okay. Because I just had that, you know, it was like that youth gone wild kind of a mentality. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. And I wanted to hang out with all, where the trouble was, that's where I wanted to be. Mm. Right? And I found almost like this weird solace hanging out with, you know, uh, a, a bunch of just <laughs> druggies and people who didn't really care about life. But I found like comfort in that. Wow. And, um, and so the, the drugs just kind of came with that group of people. Mm. Um, you know, let's try this, you know, you know, smoke one of these and smoke a joint and mm -hmm. then you know, one day the kid shows up and he's got the stuff. He's like, "This stuff's called crank. You got to try it." That's what they kind of called the meth back then. Yeah. And snorted it and um, start got hooked on that. I heard that once you, your first hit of meth is like so potent yeah. and it affects your life so much that yeah. you always try to go back to that one yeah. hit and that how how powerful it was and. Yeah, you chase it, but you never get back to it, and that's what started and initiated like right. that downhill spiral, huh? Yeah. You remember anything that ha that was significant that happened to you in that time period? Yeah. Uh, there, well, there's a lot of things that happened in that, uh, let's say, from 15 to 17, um, because I really got into the drugs heavy, and I was hanging around people that were doing really shady things. Mm -hmm. And this was in Reno. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, being on drugs and just trying to come up on money, we uh, decided to break into somebody's home. Um, so I was almost 17. I was 16, almost 17. And um, so we broke into this home thinking nobody was there. Well, there were people there. Mm -hmm. And so we broke into this home. And anyways, there was pers two people there. And um, instead of just, oh, somebody's here, we, they, because we knocked on the door, make sure nobody was at the house, cause there was no, not supposed to be anybody there. Instead of just, oh, somebody answered the door, uh, we kicked the door in with a, gr 
group of friends and kicked the door in and assaulted the people there and then you know robbed the house took what we could take mm -hmm. and um, so here I am I'm 16 and a half maybe 16 and three quarters you know we break into this house next thing you know we're being chased down by the police we got like you know 20 cop cars chasing us down in a car wow and uh, we ended up just making this choice to pull over because there was really nowhere to run it's Reno so Reno has one road that's that goes around the whole valley so yeah you, all you do is be doing is circles yeah I heard <laughs> there's like nothing out there right. you know like it's yeah wow so you guys in a car is that in it a car and um, I, I bring this story up because it was one of the one of the parts of the life the life-changing things that happened yeah yeah um, so we get pulled over next thing I know we got you know there's 10 car car uh, 10 police officers mm -hmm. or more and they're all drawn on us get on the ground face down hands behind your head uh, behind your back and so I got arrested we all did they, the ones I were that I was with they were adults they went to the county but because I was a juvenile I went to juvenile hall and in that I got sentenced uh, to um, a year at a place called NYTC, Nevada Youth Training Center. Mm -hmm. And that's in Elko, Nevada. And, and you know, the best way to describe it, it was kind of like a boy's, a boy's prison, kind of. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there wasn't any freedom there. You wore orange jumpsuits. You had locked down. It was a locked down facility. Mm -hmm. uh, chow time was together. Everything was marching in line. It was that kind of a structure. And I, so I was there for a year. How many juveniles were there? Uh, they they have anywhere from three to five hundred. Wow, that's yeah, big. Yeah. That's yeah. big. They, they, what they had, they called them dorms, and in each dorm was about fifty children. Okay. Or fifty youth, and so they had I think ten dorms. Okay. And so not all of them were filled, but so they could have had up to five hundred. That's 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 still a lot. That's a lot. It is a lot. But you know uh, when that happened to me. Um, it got me to start thinking not about, I, I still wasn't thinking about the Lord, mm -hmm. but it started getting me to think about maybe I need to make some life changes here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because one of the guys that we were with, he actually got five years. Uh, and here I am kind of getting a slap on the wrist, really, because I'm a juvenile. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, I, while I'm there, I got my GED, you know, because nice. I, I stopped when, going back a little bit. when I, When the drug started, school stopped um i think my sophomore year i think i showed up to school like 14 days out of the whole year mm. i mean I had truancy officers at me all the time and you know always running it was just a mess okay so i didn't get my high school diploma so when i was at that facility i was able to get my ged there wow. and i started thinking about you know what i need to make some changes and so i was released from there just before my 18th birthday okay and then um so now I have this kind of mindset that things need to change in my life. 